Let's do some news! My name is Mike B. Today's day is May 31st, 2019. I had to look down at the date to see what the year, for some reason. I don't know why. I am joined today by my co-host, Donuts. <laughs> and my co-hosts, Uncle Chat. Today's episode is brought to you by... Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, baby. That's right. We got our very first sort of sponsor with Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, baby. And today we're going to pop one open and check it out ourselves. Actually, I've never tried one of these. I swear to God, I've never actually tried a Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, baby. On my own, because typically I kind of I kind of rely on just, you know, coffee. But I'm going to pop one open today and go against my better judgment as somebody who is on keto this week. This thing does have some carbs. And I'm gonna see, how the fuck do you even open this thing? <laughs> there you go, whoa, that's actually kind of slick. Okay, okay, hold on. All right, I'm gonna try it right now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll let you guys know how it is, one second. Studies have proven that ingredients in Mountain Dew have gained fuel, caffeine in combination with theanine have been shown to increase accuracy and alertness. You know, that is pretty good, despite I spilled it on myself. It's pretty fucking good, pretty fucking good. I probably could have left it in the fridge a little bit longer, but, so don't drink it warm, but not bad. And some of you guys actually said the blue one is better, right? Let me see. Here's what I got in my case. Here's what I got in my case. I got a green one, which is basically just Mountain Dew amped. I'm assuming that tastes like Mountain Dew. There's also, uh, what is this, the tropical, this is a Charge Berry Blast blue, which you guys said is the best. You love the flavor blue. And then there is the Cherry Burst. Charge cherry burst. There we go. So I am looking forward to finishing off this can later on. Again, I'm on carb diet, so I can't really eat too much. All right. There we go. Don't really have much place to stand that up, but that probably works right there. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Okay. Ah, a can of what? A can of what? Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, baby. That's right. So, let's get down to the news. Thank you so much. Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, baby. For hooking us up. Selling out, just like that. So easy, so easy. Darnell's a sellout. All right, so first up in news today, I had no idea how to actually categorize, how to actually uh, sort this out and uh, figure out which order, what goes first. So we're just gonna start with uh, the one that, with some happier news, actually. Some positive news. Very positive. I, I'm, I'm, legit, I'm being serious, actually. If I keep saying it, you guys would think I'm being facetious, but I'm being serious. Microsoft has announced that they are making a change to their Xbox Game Pass. Well, not really a change, actually uh, 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 adding a, a feature to the Xbox Game Pass where it works for PC. And what they want to do is allow for you to be able to play up to hundreds of games from the uh, Microsoft Gaming uh, catalog. The same way that it functions, I guess, on uh, on uh, on the Xbox, they want it to be able to function that same way on PC. So this is pretty, uh, what do you say? Bad wording on the link. Oh, okay, okay. Um, oh my God, yeah, that link says uh, Donut broke back. Damn. He's fine. Xbox Game Pass for PC will give players unlimited access to a curated library of over 100 high-quality PC games on Windows 10 from well-known PC game developers and publishers such as Bethesda, Deep Silver, Devolver Digital, Paradox Interactive, Sega, and more. And just as we com committed to the console, uh, it is our intent to include new games from Xbox Game Studios in Xbox Game Pass for PC the same day as their global release, including titles from newly acquired studios like Obsidian and In Exile. So this is like huge news, man. This is like really, really huge news. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's huge for a number of reasons, right? On the positive side, it's like, holy shit, like we're gonna be able to play, you know, tons of games for uh, a, a nominal monthly fee. Surely there's gonna be a monthly fee. Of course, it's the whole point of this thing. Um, and actually I kind of, <laughs> hold on. I, just wanna, I don't wanna like I'm trying to sell it too much, but it is actually quite good. I gotta drink it before it gets warm. Um, and, this also means that there's a catalog of games that we previously only really had available on uh, on Xbox that uh, uh, 
could be available in a monthly, or not previously it would be available on Xbox, but previously you'd have to purchase, and then you could actually just pay a monthly fee and then, um, and then have access to them in their entirety. They also stated that they're going to be allowing, uh, they're going to be allowing games to be sold on, on Steam, which holy shit, more big news. It says, uh, Microsoft says in this, uh, in this particular write up here, it says, with that in mind, our intent is to make Xbox Game Studio PC games available in multiple stores, including our own Microsoft store on Windows uh, at their launch. We believe you should have choice in where you buy your PC games. So, wow. Imagine Minecraft, uh, Minecraft on Steam. No, seriously. Like, that's, 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 a, uh, that's a pretty big deal. And what's funny about this article, actually, like the best part about this article is that, you know, this is this is Microsoft's stance now when we remember a couple of years ago, they, they, they were trying for a moment to uh, to create their own their, their own you know, store, right? Their own storefront uh, uh, where they could uh, basically keep games kind of exclusive into to whatever. And um, a certain gentleman says uh, Microsoft has built a closed platform within a platform into Windows 10 as the first apparent step towards locking down the consumer PC ecosystem and monopolizing app distribution and commerce. And the person that said that was Epic Games co-founder Tim Sweeney. That was back in 2016. Boy, how things have changed in just a matter of a few years. Holy crap, man. You can't even, like, you can't even, like, <laughs> make this shit up. It's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Ugh, how the turntables. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. What's also amusing about this is funny because right right here on the front page, you see that this is uh, uh, you know, uh, Gears of War that they're um, they're showcasing here. Uh, Gears of War, which is a game that arguably really, really gave Epic, uh, or in particular the, the Unreal Engine, a massive boost uh, in popularity and usage and licensing and all that good stuff, could potentially come to the Steam store uh, and not the Epic Game Store, which uh, would be, uh, well, you know, maybe eventually it gets over there or whatever. Um, but uh, hilarious. So obviously Microsoft sees the, uh, uh, they, 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 under, they see what I think a lot of us see in that having a closed, a closed system in, uh, or a, a closed market, I guess, uh, on, uh, on PC just doesn't make sense. Having, uh, as, as Tim Sweeney, um, <laughs> co-founder of Epic Games put it, uh, a, a platform within a platform in an attempt to monopolize app distribution and commerce. Yep. So. Oh man, just giving us the words, old Timmy. Uh, so yeah, you can uh, <laughs> you can look forward to seeing more information uh, coming out uh, on uh, June 9th at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, basically, they're going to be announcing a lot of shit at E3, and they actually have a couple of uh, things here. Um, where is that uh, that tweet? So just just to give you an example, like Paradox Interactive. Um, adding these games to the Game Pass, right? This is the Game Pass, uh, I guess the service part of it, um, which is not, there's like a lot, a lot of details. So I might, I, honestly, I might be fucking up some of the details on this thing. So please don't rake me over the coals, okay? So some of the details are gonna be released at E3. We're speculating on some of the things, like for example, monthly fee or, or you know, access to a bunch of games or whatever. Um, a lot of those things, we don't know. Preparing the coals. No, no, just wait, just wait. Wait until June 9th. That's when we'll know for sure uh, what's happening? Even uh, even the Xbox Twitter itself says, "Please, we're going to have over 100 PC games. Time to make some space on the SSD. Stay tuned for E3. We'll have all the details on what games are coming." And then down here it says, "It will be a separate library." Oh, and it disappeared. <gasps> oh no, it's up. Oh, it's up here. Okay, I was like, "What the fuck?" Uh, it'll be a separate library of 100 PC. That was really weird. Uh, a separate library of over 100 PC games. We'll be announcing more at E3, so make sure to tune in. So they're not giving. They don't want to give away too many details or anything. But um, but it does sound like it being a separate library that even if you own it on Xbox, then it won't necessarily just work on like Steam, right? So. Um, is that the OG Mac logo? No, it's probably, it probably has something to do with pride. Uh, <laughs> it does look like, although it's funny that it does look like the OG Mac logo. Um, 
that Void Bastards will be free on PC as well. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have any details. <laughs> um, I think mainly it's because this is a bit of a publicity stunt to fight against EGS attempt to strong arm the industry. Yeah. <clears throat> Weird is the part of this Microsoft is choose where you want to get it, but then restricts it from Epic. Well, I mean, because it's against Epic, I'm going to support it. But I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Uh, I do think that, uh, I, 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 you know, I, I actually wonder if Epic was not down for it. If they're, maybe if they were like, um, you know, they didn't want to have a shared market with Steam. Because right now, Epic is all about doing everything they can to try to, to, to basically dethrone Steam. And really, this, this announcement is pretty much the end of that crusade. Um, really, I mean, seriously, the writing is on the wall in this regard. Um, while you could, I mean, beforehand, I would argue that there's no way that Steam would just fucking disappear. There's no fucking way. People have thousands of games on this platform. Um, there's no way it's going to happen. But in terms of, uh, of Epic getting a monopoly and basically getting every new, you know, th every new title that comes out and all that stuff, that's basically dead. Now that Microsoft is available, Xbox, don't forget, like, Xbox is, you know, such a huge platform, duh, uh, that uh, making these games available on PC. I'm sure a lot of you guys who are PC, you know, players um, primarily probably have an Xbox, yikes, maybe collecting dust, and it might be an X-Bone or an Xbox 360, but you probably have one of those floating around. So, it's just... It's, it's, this is just, this is really a good, a massively good step for, uh, for PC players. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'm excited. Like this is, this is probably some of the best news, uh, regarding E3 <laughs> that I've seen the Netflix box. Oh, it's, it's funny because it's true. <laughs> it has become the Netflix box for a lot of folks. Uh, wait, does Netflix work on Xbox 360? Cause I might have to dust that bitch off. I have so many indie games on that thing. Xbox Live Indie Game Market was just like, that was home. All those $1 games, oh man, I don't know anybody made money off that service. Um, my guess is that the 100 games will be their platinum titles, the greatest hits things. Oh, that's probably it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I also wonder like how they're going to run on uh, on PC. Like I understand that, you know, they're, they're going to make, they're also going to make 132 uh, games uh, uh, compatible as well. So there, again, this is, there's a lot of stuff that I'm fuzzy on the details on because there are not a lot of details. So We'll have to, uh, um, we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm excited. I'm excited for E3 now. Microsoft has been beta testing native Xbox game support on Windows 10 for the past year. I've heard this. Yeah, I've heard, I've not been part of this, but I've heard this. Um, I would like to see, personally, I would like to see Sea of Thieves on Steam. I don't actually technically own Sea of Thieves. I think the only Microsoft based, like Microsoft store based game I own, or two games actually, is Minecraft. Uh, which I don't even think I bought it through them. I think I used the code that I was sent because I purchased the game like you know, previously. Um, and Forza. And Forza is like S tier game right there. Forza is super fucking good. So I don't know if Forza is going to make the jump to uh, uh, to Steam anytime soon. But can you imagine? <laughs> uh, I play uh, Void Blasters through Steam. Oh yeah, of course. Um, Minecraft, Fat and Phantom Dust, and ReCore. Yeah, Forza. Forza is some shit, man. Uh, last Microsoft uh, exclusive I got was gigantic. Oh, wah, 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 wah. That sucks. Uh, Forza 7 isn't part of the current Game Pass anymore. Uh, yeah, so I don't know what the details are in terms of whether or not the current Game Pass is just going to be all encompassing, kind of like a World of Warcraft uh, you know, subscription where it's like if you have a WoW uh, subscription, then Classic will be available to you as, as basically a feature add to that uh, um, uh, to that subscription. I don't know if that's how they're going to work it, but, uh, you know, like they said right here, it says, uh, uh, it will be announced more at E3. So the date on that, if you want to go ahead and tune in is going to be, uh, June 9th, 1 PM Pacific time. Yes. Rip gigantic. Ah, <sighs> they just kept on shifting gears, man. They just kept fucking shifting gears. That's seriously the biggest problem they had was they kept changing their mind on shit. This fucking lid is actually pretty awesome. This is actually, hold on a second. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, baby. Does it actually like, okay, so you basically pop this open here. It's like a locking mechanism. Oh, it's got a little hole in the top, so that way you could chug it if you need to. And then you slide it open. That's pretty fucking sick. Look at that. You push that down, slide it, and it locks into place. Now, the question is, oh, man, I hope they don't review this video because I don't know if this is going to work. Let me see. Let me get some tissues out. Yes, I have tissues next to my fucking thing. Don't, don't question. There's a couple drops on the lid, but... Holy 
Holy shit! It works! <laughs> Alright, cool! <laughs> that was risky. <laughs> that was really risky. Uh, okay, alright, so we're good. Alright, so, hold on. Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, baby! <sighs> this is the best promotion I've ever done, damn it. And probably only. So, let's see. Next up! Next up! Ah. <sighs> Maybe Epic could compete with Steam if they partner with PlayStation, uh, PS1, the console war, and they have a lot of exclusive. That's true, yeah. If if we see a PlayStation and uh, Epic Game Store partnership, that would be massive. I highly, highly doubt that'll happen, though. Because, really, there's nothing, there's nothing for PlayStation, for Sony, to, to gain from that relationship. Sony PlayStation is, uh, they have a, a uh, more stable uh, platform than Epic does. Epic's platform is based on uh Fortnite and basically just throwing away money on trying to on getting exclusives and that doesn't really bode well for long term um investments and so I can't really see Sony partnering up with uh with Epic in any fashion and also how could they like uh PlayStation doesn't have um they don't have that cross platform capability of being able to you know take a game uh that you purchased like like Last of Us or uh, or a Rocket League PlayStation, <laughs> or like, or yeah, exclusive games uh, for that uh, running on the PC. So, so yeah, uh, I don't see that happening, unfortunately. But that would be a win for them. I don't know how much of a win, but yeah. Uh, what about uh, the Journey exclusive on Epic Store? That's a PlayStation game. Well, uh, is that it was Journey? I guess Journey was never released on PC, huh? Yeah, that's a, that's still a big step to go from you know releasing a game to to actually having forming a partner partnership. Uh, but yeah, uh, Epic got a new commission for Fortnite esports. That's right, they got somebody from Blizzard, if I recall. I could be recalling incorrectly. I don't know. All right, next next story. Next story. That's right, they did get from Owl. That's right, from uh, Overwatch League. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Ryan Hart. Ah, so next up, this is a game called Call of Duty Modern Warfare that's getting a reboot. Uh, I really didn't really know anything about it because I don't follow Call of Duty news because it's typically not really my cup of, my cup of tea. Um, but Venture Beats resident platformer says that some scenes from the new Call of Duty uh, should be deleted. Deleted. Oh man. Oh, this is gonna be a fun one. Why is this video popped up? All right, so Dean Takahashi, who is a uh, uh, who is a lead writer for Venture Beats, uh, he well, let's go back. So first off, Infinity Infinity War, sorry, Infinity yeah, Infinity War's Modern Warfare uh, is a reboot of the franchise, has very little in common with the previous games, right? Because their mentality is that well, not a lot of people nowadays have played the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare, so. Uh, so there's really not, uh, uh, any good reason to, to, uh, there's, there's no reason not to just reboot it and maybe keep a couple of characters and all that good stuff. So it makes sense. The game's old enough. Nobody's installing Modern Warfare 1 or whatever and playing it. Uh, so, but they say that the combat is going to be, quote, ripped from the headlines. Uh, and what they mean is basically, you know, like, like, like actual modern warfare, <laughs> right? Like, it's like the way things are typically done now, where you have, uh, you have, you know, insurgents that are, uh, um, are fighters that are, that are basically in civilian clothes and they're hiding amongst civilians. Uh, meanwhile, like you, you know, as, as a soldier or as, as, you know, somebody who's playing the game, you have to, uh, discern, you know, the difference between a civilian and, uh, and, uh, an actual, uh, insurgent. And so that shit's probably pretty fucking tough, right? Uh, so they're gonna go for that angle uh, and push that. And there's a couple of scenes that have been uh, that uh, Dean Takashi is uh, is claiming that that um, they shouldn't be in the game. Like they shouldn't be in the game. So he says, uh, "Let me see. Should this? There it is, right here. It's right. But fucking first thing. So he says, uh, I've been a Call of Duty fan from the first game in 2003, but I have never wondered about this question before until now." Should this particular game, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, be made? The small glimpse I've seen of it so far tells me no. So these guys, they, they went to a press event where they, uh, um, you know, they, they basically got up on stage and they showed all of these different uh, uh, scenes and they discussed the this different scenes for the game and all that good stuff. And so they got a, a pretty good glimpse of that. Um, and so he's saying 
that, uh, that it tells me no. And he doubles down on this later on. And then he triples down later on Twitter. I'll show you that shit later. Uh, but he says that, let's see, my reaction. There you go. He says, my reaction is not that developers should, should censor themselves or someone else should censor them. Uh, my question is about choices. We can make this kind of game, but should we? Uh, but should this kind of content, which we can see in movies or books, be in video games? Should they be depicted in form of art where we have so much agency? It's going to be a mature rated game that kids shouldn't play. But I had a conversation with an Uber driver who told me he lets his six-year-old play Call of Duty. I played Call uh, Mortal Kombat when I was little. It didn't affect me, he said. So, yeah, he is calling for them to, I guess, remove these functions. Now, you may not take that from this, so let me go ahead and get you something else. Somebody calls him out and says, I'm not saying games should be censored, but games should be censored. It's rated M for a reason. It's not the responsibility of game developers or publishers to do a parent's job when the parents let your younger kids play these games. Go burn a book elsewhere. He's referring to uh, Fahrenheit 451. Um, he says, I know Dean responds. He says, I am not a book burner or a game burner. In 30 years of writing about video games, I have never said something like this. I am raising the question for this one. And I am saying they should drop these scenes. I am flagging this for parents to be aware of another no Russian. No Russian, if you're uh, not familiar, is a mission in, uh, I want to say like three Call of Duties ago, <laughs> uh, where you are, um, basically undercover operative with the, uh, thank you, Modern Warfare 2, um, uh, with a bunch of, uh, I think you're going in with a bunch of Russians and you basically shoot a bunch of civilians in, um, uh, in an airport. Now you don't have to, you don't actually have to shoot anybody. You could just not shoot and still get through the mission, but you're still there to witness the, the, uh, brutality of, uh, of killing innocent civilians, um, in the, in that scenario. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Politicians at the time had a field day with that. The news had a field day with that. That was a huge deal. And so that's what he's, that's what he's referring to here. He's saying, should he's, he's saying I'm flagging this for parents to be aware of, uh, uh, of another no Russian. Uh, I did that without shooting, took a lot of reloads. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> uh, I shot the shit out of, that air, out of the airport. Yeah, I figured like you could just basically shoot the ceiling and it's kind of like, whatever. Uh, but, you know, he says he's not a book burner or a game burner. Uh, but then he turns out, he says, I am saying that they should drop these scenes. So he is. He is, in effect, calling for some kind of censorship uh, on this. And I got to say, it's just it's just it's just silly. And I know that. I mean, I've, I've caught glimpses of you guys. Chat's moving pretty fucking quickly here because I know all of you guys are pretty heated about this. Nobody wants to hear that somebody who is a game journalist, as we know, a lot of game journalists don't like games for some reason, uh, is uh, is is opting for some kind of uh, censorship. It's ridiculous. It's 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 really it's really ridiculous. We already have a system in place. There's we have two systems in place actually. We have the ESRB rating system and we have parenting. Uh, so with those two things in place, I feel like this should be enough. This should be enough to uh, uh, to prevent us uh, or to. Uh, uh, to, to basically monitor and control these uh, and keep these games out of uh, children's hands. I'm a father. I don't let Declan play Modern Warfare. <laughs> and I wouldn't. My kid plays fucking Minecraft and Sonic. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to let him play Gears of War or any of those games that are like, you know, just crazy. He saw the goriest thing he's ever seen in his life is 2014 Godzilla, which you just watched last week for the first time. He's six years old going on seven. It's not... It's yeah, that's that's it's it's a parenting thing for fuck's sake. Sonic is pretty brutal blowing up robots left and right and center. Yeah, but the robots is fine. Uh, I love how there are modern studies about game violence are coming to the conclusion that they do not make kids violence. Well, <laughs> I feel like what makes kids violence is like fucking social media and news. <laughs> like the fucking news does it uh, more than anything else. Guy probably wants red color removed from Schindler's List. Probably, yeah. Oh my god. Uh, just let the kid play Doom 2016. Sure, he'll be fine. I'll let him play Doom 1. How's that? No, I wouldn't even let him play that. It's pretty, still, still. Uh, but again, I'm being a parent on this. I'm making parenting decisions uh, for my kid. And it's just something that, uh, that you know, more. Like, he's, he's basically saying, I'm flagging this for parents to be aware of, of another no Russian. But that's contradictory to his statement saying that they should remove the scene. You can say that the scene didn't fit my, my tastes. There is a game, I can't remember the name of this game, uh, because I played like two minutes of it. Homefront. There it is. Uh, I, I played Homefront for like two minutes and I couldn't, I couldn't play anymore. Uh, the opening scene in Homefront, you're on a, you're on a bus. I want to say you're looking at a bus and you're seeing, uh, some part of the U.S. 
that's basically in like shambles. Like it was recently attacked and all that stuff. Um, and personally, personally, uh, yeah, 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 execution. Yeah, personally, I don't like seeing the U.S. in such a state. The U.S. is already in such a state that I'm not particularly proud of. But as somebody who is, I, I mean, I, I feel like I love my country, right? Uh, I did my term in the military, uh, and I and I enjoyed it, and I would do it again. Um, I don't like seeing it in that state, but that's that's a personal thing for me, right? It's a personal thing uh, for uh, for me to not want to see. Um, and maybe it wasn't home front. I can't remember, but, uh, that's also another reason why I didn't, I didn't really follow through too much with, uh, uh, the man in the high tower because of just, but I know I recognize that it's me. I recognize that it's me. Um, and Dean is not recognizing that it was, uh, that it was, it was, it was home front. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, Dean is not recognizing that there's a difference between, um, his personal opinion and what he wants to call for censorship. He wants to call for censorship. So yeah, definitely was home for I played just the other week. There you go. Home for is when uh, the U.S. gets invaded. Thank you so much. I don't like seeing the country and the state in the game, but it also drives me to play and beat the enemy in the game. But I'm also not going to go out in real life and hurt people. It's a game. Of, of course. Of course. Can we call this virtue signaling? In a sense, sure. You can call it a sense. It's basically, I mean, I don't want to go down that path. It's like just really what it is, is just basically a call for censorship. And he's saying, he's saying, I'm not a book burner. He's saying, I'm not for censorship, but I would like them to censor this. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Um, so, yeah, I just, I just feel like it, there's another article that was written, uh, it, in particular about Venture Beats um, uh, coverage of this uh, that that said uh, it, it did a pretty good breakdown of like all the coverage of it. Of course, it called out Dean on his uh, on his Cuphead maximum Cupheadness, uh, and uh, <laughs> for those of you guys who don't remember, because I know that names get lost, uh, uh, Dean Takashi is the one that went to go play a Cuphead in a preview. And he couldn't get past the tutorial because I guess he couldn't read on the screen where it said that you jump and dash and he couldn't do the jump dash part. And he could, I guess he couldn't pass the tutorial. And yeah, yeah, that that's the same guy. So, and he also, also the same person who uh, several years ago completed Mass Effect without using any of the talent or slash skill points. He just didn't know that they were there. And he even stated in his review Oh yeah, they have these things. I did not use them the entirety of the thing. So it just it just feels like Dean is maybe a good writer for other subject matters, but video games I don't feel like is his forte anymore. He's been doing it for 30 years. He's been writing for games, but at some point some people just fall off. Some people just fall off. Um, I will just say this is why I hate so many game journals and even YouTubers uh, doing news and stuff. They are very often screw any sense of actual uh, actual doing news and make everything about how they want things to be while claiming that it is about the industry. Well, hopefully you don't get that impression here. <laughs> In my day, you only had two action buttons and four directions. That's right. That's right. I just had a, a, a ball, a ball and one button. <laughs> that was it. Ah, oh, man. So, so the new call of duty is, uh, is apparently pretty, pretty gruesome. So how do you, I don't want the industry to be this way. I know. I just want, you know, I want, I want, if, if we're going to recognize, you can't say, uh, that, uh, you can't, you can't say that video games are an art, right? Video games should be classified as an art, but then say we need to censor yeah, these particular scenes in this particular game. We need to censor these kinds of games. We can't have these kinds of games. What was that? What was that game? Uh, brutal, brut, brutal, brut. Brute, brute something. Uh, it was basically a game where you uh, you had a guy who just basically run around killing innocent civilians. It was a top down twin stick shooter, uh, and um, that's all. The whole point of the whole show was hatred. Thank you, not brutal, whatever. Hatred. Blood glass co host. Um, blood blood glass beat you to it. Sorry guys. Uh, although Ira did get the capital in there. Uh, yeah, like when that game came out, everybody jumped on the uh, on the bandwagon. I was saying like this this game should not be released, and it, I don't believe it ever got released on uh, on Steam. And they ended up selling it by themselves. Uh, and there's been a couple of of games trying to cash in on controversy like that. But I mean, again, if we're gonna if we're gonna respect video games as an art form, we have to accept them as an art form. And there's a lot of art out there that you know people will find offensive. Uh, but you have to you have to take it as. Um, uh, you have, you have to accept it as a whole as art or not at all. And I'm willing to bet at some point in time, Dean probably said, or at least he holds the opinion of video games being an art as somebody who has been in the business for 30 plus years. I would assume that he was, that he recognizes that video games are in fact an art, uh, as a whole. Uh, and, uh, and again, they should be respected 
as such. This all seems to be a very carefully crafted promotion for Call of Duty. Oh man, just the most, yeah, the most, just, just, uh, <laughs> how would they even pull that up? Uh, I, I played, did I play Postal? I may have played Postal, like, a long time ago, like, a real long time ago. Uh, but yeah, Postal was, uh, was incredibly violent, but it's still, but still, like, it's, if, if, if it's too violent, don't fucking buy it. Mortal Kombat was, like, it was, was a game that had tons, tons and tons of, um, uh, of headlines back in the 90s. And, like, I mean, even, I mean, so much, like, even, like, the, the Super Nintendo version didn't have blood. It had a sweat. Like, the blood was white. And then you had to put in a code or something like that to, uh, to unlock blood, <laughs> unlock red blood, <laughs> you know, like punch somebody uppercut, rip their head off. It's like water falls out. It was silly. Um, Mortal Kombat is way too silly to be called by an apostle Two had some pretty good commentary on the protest over the violence in the first, uh, gore codes. That's right. Oh man. Uh, probably a lot of people find Mike's photography as offensive. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I'm not being censored. In the, I guess in the public sense, uh, sure, you can, you can argue that, yeah, I have to censor my content when I post it to Instagram, for sure. Like, I, have to, I can't post this bare boobies on Instagram. I had to actually, um, uh, I have to censor them in, in some way. But that's in respect to the, 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 the rules of the platform, which is why hatred, you know, hatred is not being on Steam. That was up to Steam to make that decision and saying that this is not a game that we want on our platform. And they're technically allowed to do that, right? But you can't say, you can't say... We can, we need to stop people from making these games or taking these kinds of pictures or whatever. And don't take that taking kinds of taking pictures things too fucking far. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, you can't, you can't say that they have to stop doing those things. You could say you won't support the platform that will promote those things, but you can't say that, um, that they, that they cannot make those things. Um, yeah, so about anime chat. Yeah, anime chat. Hatred was initially on Steam Greenlight, then removed, but Gabe bought, brought it back with a personal apology and the game released in Steam June 1st, 2015. Oh, thank you. That's right. Wow, it's been a while. But thank you so much, Savern. Man, my co-host just fucking ripping it up, man. Damn. Damn. Um, yeah, there are, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. There are obvious extremes here that we will not go to uh, specifically. So you guys, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, uh, it's just, it's, I, I think that Dean is, um, I don't know, man. I, he does tech. He does tech and all that stuff as well. So he, it's not like uh, uh, he he's completely <laughs> like he's like you should just get fired. No, I don't think he should get fired. I just think that he maybe shouldn't cover games anymore. I, I don't feel like Venture Beat as a whole should really cover games anymore because uh, as a whole, they've done some questionable things in the past that I don't necessarily approve of. Um, but that's just my personal opinion. I don't want to censor anybody or say they shouldn't exist. They're allowed to do that. Uh, you should, YouTube should send half of the paycheck to Twitch chat. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube send half of that $60 a month to, to, uh, to these guys. You guys can split it. You guys have the whole thing and split it. How's that? All right. Make sure it's open. <laughs> this will be the one time it's like not and it spills over me. Hmm. Mountain Dew app game fuel, baby. I got to stay on top of that button. Um, all right. Next. Allowed to exist. Thank you. Uh, but you're saying that other people don't know what they're doing. We can't have that. You need to be censored. I know. I know. I know. Uh, 50 cents each. Oh, damn. Um, all right. So next up, this news broke over the weekend. Uh, I was a little upset. They could have done it a couple days prior, and I would have been much happier because we covered on actual news last week. But but we're going to go ahead and talk about it today anyways. Did you, do you or someone you love have a video game disorder? Because technically, that is a thing now. Gaming disorders has been classified as a disease. Video game dis uh, addiction. Uh, it says for gaming disorder, and this is really important, right? It's really important. First off, it, it's going to go into effect um, March 1st, uh, January 1st, 2022. So you got a couple years here to kind of work yourself up to this. Um, as far as I know, you do not get a parking placard for this. Um, and if you're in the military, you cannot get a, uh, a, a medical discharge for this yet. That's all we know so far. But here's what they say. It says, for gaming, for gaming disorder to be diagnosed, the behavior pattern must be of sufficient severity to result in significant impairment on personal, family, social, educational, occupational, or other important areas of functioning and would normally have been evident for at least 12 months. So they're saying for over the course of a year, 
you have to have been displayed this kind of basically, you know, you know, people basically pull back from society and just kind of focus on a game. Remember, like when you we used to play World of Warcraft, right? <laughs> like that's pretty much the way it was. Uh and no social security, oh, no social security disability event. That's right, nothing, nothing. 13 million hours in WoW, exactly. Uh, so, so they are they are classifying uh, people who have a video game disorder uh, or addiction as a as a disease. And what this means is because it is officially. Remember when I sat on that thing earlier before the show? It's really, it's really, it's really hitting me right now. I just want you guys to know for those of you guys who are watching live. Oh. All right. Uh, so what the. Uh, massively uncomfortable right now <laughs> what the uh uh what this could mean is that uh if you need to get some kind of intervention uh or some kind of uh some kind of help therapy or something to help you with a video game addiction then uh you can do so probably you can potentially get it covered under insurance so that's that is it's a pretty big deal here's what i'll say about this i definitely recognize the uh the addiction portion of it because, uh, you know, as when I was in the military, um, I went in the military pretty much right when EverQuest came out. Uh, and no entries will cover this. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe. All right. Uh, <laughs> that's why I said maybe. <laughs> uh, I went to the military right when e EQ99 uh, was released. And I remember when we used to have lots of friends that would hang out in the hallway and get fucking drunk. And then just fucking pass out in the hallway and your friends would carry you to your room or drag you to your room because those tile floors, you just drag them. Uh, drag you to your room and just drop you off on the floor and leave you there for the next day. And over time, we started losing people. People wouldn't show up. Oh, where's, where's, uh, where's Almada? Where's he at? Oh, he's playing, he's playing Ever, Ever, Ever Crack. Like, what is that? And so I went to go check it out for, from no, myself to see what the fuck it was. And it looked dumb. It looked dumb, right? As someone who played Unreal Tournament, I, my only game that I played was Unreal Tournament, pretty much. Uh, and so seeing the slow-paced RPG was just like, what is the what what is the appeal here? But then, but then I fucking sat there for like three hours and watched my buddy Hughes play. He played that bitch, and I was watching, and I was just like, okay, yeah, okay, cool. Thankfully, I was too damn broke to afford the monthly subscription. And so I was like, you know what? No, it's fine. It's fine. Plus it was a stigma because we were losing. They say that we lost more soldiers uh, to, <laughs> to EverQuest than we did in uh, Desert, Desert Shield. I think it was a Desert Shield, Desert Storm. Um, and you know, it was a joke, obviously, <laughs> but, uh, but it felt like that. Like you had lots of people would just basically tug away and they'd never come out. Um, and so I understand the video gaming addiction, addiction portion, uh, I myself have an addictive personality where I get hooked on things, uh, mostly out of habit, but that is also, I'm not saying it's an excuse to say, it goes like, well, you know, I could stop anytime. That's maybe not necessarily true. I'll get hooked on games and just like play it nonstop. Uh, right now it's like fell seals is a game that I, 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 I just, I, I need that. I need that. Yeah. That dopamine hookup. I need to play it. I need to hear the music. Right, like last night, I pulled up the fucking soundtrack on Bandcamp, and I started listening to the fucking soundtrack to go to sleep. Uh, and so I recognize that there are people who can't let go of these things, um, and it could actually get in the way of of other uh, responsibilities that they may have. So I recognize why they uh, have classified it as a, uh, uh, as a as a disease, and there really is no but there. I see, I understand, like I get it. I told, it's funny, like we can make fun of it, but still. Like it, it's, I mean, it's, it's, if it's something that can help some folks get help, then I feel like, you know what? It's a good thing. Uh, he says, uh, should all people who engage in gaming be concerned about developing gaming disorders? So it's like, it's kind of like crack, right? It's like, it's like, oh, you, th you think, uh, you think I should probably not try crack just in case I get, you know, addicted. Maybe just one little bump. Uh, it says studies suggest that gaming disorder affects only a small proportion of people who engage in digital or video gaming activities. However, people who are partake in gaming should be alert to the amount of time they spend on gaming activities, particularly when it is to the exclusion of other daily activities. This is like me and space engineers, like seriously, all the time. They let the shit running, come up, check it all the time. Do, okay, I gotta run a couple more things. Okay, cool. Let me go mine the shit real quick. It'll take two seconds. Like seriously, you get hooked. Um, it said as well as to any changes in their physical or psychological health and social functioning that could be attributed to their pattern of gaming behavior. I actually was dumped by my ex. 
because I would not pay attention to her because I was playing World of Warcraft. Even though I got her to play World of Warcraft 2, I thought I was in. I was like, oh shit, my girlfriend plays World of Warcraft. I'm in. And she got hooked too, but still, she didn't like the fact that I would, I would, I would put the game and all of my PvP shit in front, uh, ahead of her. And then I met Jen. And you know what Jen did? Jen sat there and read a book while I, while I fucking uh, uh, did my, um, my rated. <laughs> I did all my rated shit and Jen was basically sitting behind me just reading a book. And I was like, this is the one. This is the one right here. And I did. I married her. It was great. Uh, <laughs> is the problem on the mobile side since all the wheels uh, are right? Wait, what do you mean? Um, Halsey, I missed a message over here. I got Mike addicted to inject that Felsey directly into her vein. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They just keep giving like, more stuff. It's just so much stuff in the fucking game. I got hooked so badly on Diablo 2 that I needed to uninstall it. I would jump in as soon as I got home from school and play with a buddy and would continue farming well after he logged off until like 10, 11 p.m. Yeah, it's it's a um, it's it's a very real thing. And I, and I feel like as much as we like to make fun of this, like, because of course, it's we love to make fun of this. Uh, we still, uh, we I feel like we should still recognize that for some people, like this is a uh, this is a very real thing that they don't have the ability to like to uh, to separate themselves from from games and say you know what it's cool I'll just pause it and I could come back and play it later. So I'm curious to see uh, what kind of developments what, once it's actually a, 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 in 2022. So uh, check back after 2022. We'll cover it tomorrow. But um, you know what kind of impact that might have on certain folks uh, in terms of like what kind of help that they can get you know they can actually receive and all that. Uh, let's see. Uh, whales, uh, whales on mobile games. Yeah, 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 actually, yeah. So, like, people who are, who, who spend, uh, just tons and tons of cash, that's a, uh, you know, that's, that's a big deal, man. Like, some people can't not do that. That's, like, borderline video game addiction slash gambling addiction, depending on what they're buying, right? Um, yeah, so, <sighs> woo! Like, one little sip of this. I haven't really had any caffeine today. I just basically just had this. Hold on, hold on. Mountain Dew app game fuel, baby. Mm. It's starting to get warm, though, actually. Um, when it's midnight and you're like, shit, I forgot to make dinner. It starts making pasta at 1 a.m. Yeah. Yes. For me, it was it was, uh, it was always playing WoW. I'd basically, um, most of the people I played with were like in, um, uh, well, not in Pacific. Uh, and so they would leave to go go to sleep. And I would be like, oh, shit, I got to go to Del Taco. And so I'd go to Del Taco. And, uh, and I was like midnight and that's why I was like super fucking fat. <laughs> so like, I recognize the whole, like, you know, phys physical health, you know, uh, degrading because you're just like, you're just, you're not taking time to take care of yourself. So I totally understand this stupid thing with the world health organization. Everyone's like, Oh, click this ability now. And it's like, well, maybe we could, I don't know. We might be able to see <laughs> later on. Ah, let's see. Um, Talk about games at, at uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're addicted to, to, to Twitch. How can we take 30 minutes to cook a meal when it takes 10 seconds to cook in? Wow, I know. What is the problem with that? Uh, I play EU online, global server equals I play all sorts of crazy time zones. Can be terrible at times. Uh, I'm going to the VA and putting this down in my paperwork. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Uh, all right, so next up, next up, uh, Hearthstone Global Games. Maybe the first pay-per-view event on Twitch. Just so you know, I pieced together that headline myself. I'm not looking for, for approval or praise. I'm just saying that that is a question mark, <laughs> okay? It is, it is something that seems like that could potentially be the case, given what we've seen recently. So there is a, uh, there's a channel that popped up on Twitch, and it says HGG Cheering Test. It is a verified account. And at one point it was streaming. Uh, I shall play a clip here. Uh, let's see, clip. There's no video. The, the, all the clips are here, though. It was basically just streaming this, pretty much nonstop. Now this is just several days ago. Um, we don't know anything about this. All we know is, and there's actually some pictures in here. Let me grab some pictures so you can see what I'm talking about because that doesn't really tell you anything. Um, is that it says right here. That okay, yes, thank you. Continue without supporting you. I feel bad. Uh, it says right here that uh, your free preview ends in three minutes and 50 seconds. Subscribing directly supports the broadcasters, includes blah 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 blah. Watch da 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 da. So it says the fact that it just says uh, it's you so and so is streaming for subscribers and your free preview ends in three minutes and 50 seconds. Like that's a that's a pretty clear cut case of they're testing a pay per view uh, option. 
Now, we don't know anything about this. We don't know anything about this. It does say you know, screen, streaming for subscribers, but we don't know anything else. Uh, somebody on Reddit said, oh, this could be Hearthstone Global Games, HGG, because they have an event coming up on July. Uh, let's see. They have an event coming up uh, soon. Let's just say soon. Um, oh, yeah, as soon as May 31st, week three of, uh, of the 2019 first season begins. Well, it's May 31st right now, so that's not the case. But, uh, but yeah, we'll have to, I guess we'll, we'll soon see. But Twitch has not said anything about this. <sighs> now, I knew, I knew that everyone would go the direction of, of uh, cam shows, right? And I don't blame you guys. Because it does, it does feel like it would be a medium for that. But we don't know what this, again, we can make all these assumptions. We don't know if this is going to be available in, for everybody. But we can be fairly certain that this is going to be a thing. Uh, whether it's available to just everybody or just to certain broadcasters, well, that remains to be seen. But if Twitch can find a way to monetize private streams, uh, and it's profitable for them, then yeah, they're gonna do it. Uh, Twitch has done this before, I believe. It was just a quality, uh, it, it was just quality. Yeah, they had quality restrictions at the time. Yep. So HD was available if you were a sub. Um, but if you were a Dom, then you got, uh, you got regular. Uh, Hearthstone doesn't seem like a very good choice for a successful first stream. Or is it? Uh, is it? <laughs> is it maybe a smaller test, right? If it's if it's not a if it's not something massive like worlds, then perhaps uh, that is the best option to, to test on. <laughs> like here's here's just like a small time uh, small time game having a small time competition. Maybe we'll go ahead and get these. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll try to test out this new feature on them. Um, I guess I guess this is something that we'll probably see more of later because at some point Twitch is gonna have to say something. Um, I don't think that a that a feature like this is something they're going to announce at TwitchCon because there's so much negative neg like negative connotations to just the feature itself on paper. Uh, you know, already Twitch has an issue with combating the um, the stigma of uh, of being like a cam girl light site with like you know some 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 people in just chatting or body painting stuff. Uh, so we have these. Uh, there is a stigma already. Adding a pay-per-view, a private, a private cam session, essentially, uh, only further propagates that. So I don't think it's something they're going to announce for everybody. Um, I think this might be something that they're going to do for um, for uh, uh, for just bigger events and whatnot. Uh, K Pike's body painting is legit. Yes, K Pike's body painting is legit. She is actually the go-to one that I refer to when I would talk about like good body painting stuff. Um, and I understand that everybody takes time to get good. Not everybody starts off super good, but sometimes I just feel like, you know what? Maybe this is not just for the body painting. Um, how many bits to unlock Snapchat? I know. <laughs> Somebody on Reddit said, uh, 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 be sure to sub up for, for Sunday's pool stream. <laughs> like sub Sunday is going to take a whole nother twist. But again, I don't think this is a feature that's going to be available for everybody now, but eventually, eventually I, yeah, I, I do think that they're, if they, if they find success in this now, uh, I feel like they're going to try to, to push that to, um, they'll start with the bigger streamers and they'll have like maybe some kind of event or something like that. That'll get them all, um, or they get them, uh, they, they get people to sub up for, you know, a special event or something. And then they'll basically go from there. What's funny is, you know, and again, it's an assumption based off of the acronym HGG that it's the Hearthstone uh, Global Games. Um, it's funny because Blizzard's own video policy actually states that they don't allow you to stream video behind a premium wall. So <laughs> now it's their own. It's their own video policy. They're more than welcome to break it. I just think it's funny. <laughs> that that's what they that, that's what they say but not what they do uh if they end up doing this so we'll see uh, yeah no 100 more subs to start a private sub show yes yeah i'll do squats at 10 subs that was a real thing i watched for so long she never did squats i was super mad uh Syria was banned for saying that if she didn't get enough subs or, or donations real witch she wasn't doing any of her pool streams yeah yep ah uh, yeah it's it's you know, there they can't. Okay, I can't expect Twitch to regulate and and qualify every streamer that comes on board. Look at the artifact section 
right? Uh, if those of you guys who missed it, last week we touched on it a little bit after, after the news session, uh, but the artifact uh, uh, directory on Twitch, which I think it still exists, actually. Let me go check real quick. I had to check it off camera because it's so, it's so bad. It's so, so, so bad. Um, Game directory artifact. Uh, it looks like it's been cleaned up. All right, cool. So the artifact uh, Twitch category was actually jam-packed with like some very questionable content. And, um, and so I, I think what they added, somebody, one of you guys, my co-host here, there said that, uh, they brought in a, um, uh, a, a double, a dual factor or a dual, <laughs> uh, what, what the fuck? <laughs> I can't even fucking think of it right now. Uh, but basically, they, they tied up the security a little bit to prevent people from basically botting two-factor, double-factor. It's like a movie, like a Steven Seagal movie. Uh, there was a stream of the entirety of Game of Thrones Season 1 along with other questionable... Oh, yeah, dude, there were, like, beheadings. There was, like, straight-up porn on there. Uh, Two Girls, One Cup was on there. Um, there was, uh, 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 there was, what else? Oh, there was, there was, like, actual, like, uh, a chatterbait style stuff. Like, this girl was just getting off with the, with the thing. I mean, all of this stuff was happening on, on Twitch. And it was so surreal to see this. Oh, yeah, the dude, no, the dude wasn't banging a pig. He was getting fucked by the pig. Or vice versa. Yeah, thank you. Get it right. Get it right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a thing. It's, I mean, not that, that, not that that's a thing. I mean, like, that those things happened uh, in the, uh, in the category. Uh, <laughs> wait, what? No, for real. It actually, yeah, it, it actually happened, man. Like, there, because people were making new accounts and, uh, and just streaming whatever. And the shit was cancer. Like, the stuff they were streaming, the, the, the audio was, like, all garbled. The, the, the screen looked like some kind of weird, um, montage of just like random 4chan images and, it was, and, and random anime sprinkled in all over the place. <sighs> the stuff you import hub host. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, you saw that you saw the hog. Yeah, no, something, some things I wish I didn't, but yes, uh, that was, why do these people even have this shit on their computer? <laughs> I know, I know exactly. The TV show, the center thing. If I remember, as long as they're from Russia or Ukraine, Twitch doesn't stop it because it's legal there. I could be way off, but I thought it was something on that because those Russians would always be watching movies or TV shows. Oh, how interesting. Although I feel like the platform itself would hold have the last word, regardless of whether or not it's legal in a particular country. But if, if uh, Twitch has a setup in Russia, then I guess, then I guess, yeah, they they have to basically respect Russian law, which uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything about that. So I'm curious. Um, uh, and it was all because a single meme called Artifact Checked by Nim, where he would check how low the artifact view count was. Ooh. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, it was, it was, it was pretty surreal to see, actually. There's, there's photos floating around all over the place, um, that show the, the mayhem. And, uh, in, in sort of related news, uh, regarding, uh, Hearthstone, uh, the, uh, the popular site, relatively popular site, actually, um, Hearthpone is actually shutting down. So Hearthpone is going to be shutting down six years of service. I was actually, it's funny, I was actually, uh, kittens, you remember, we were there when, uh, when we were, uh, when Hearthpone came up and we were making our own Hearthhead and, uh, and all that shit happened. Um, but what's interesting is that with Hearthpone closing, uh, they're not offering to sell it back to Flux Flasher, who Flux, Flux is the one who actually, um, who owned the site and they're not allowing him to even buy it back. So they're opting to shut it down completely without giving it to anybody else. Uh, and we don't know why. We don't know if it's because low, uh, low view counts. Uh, Flux says that there is no issue with traffic. He said it gets plenty of traffic. Uh, but, but, you know, as somebody who has seen the back end of some of these sites, I can see why, especially if they get like partially integrated, Curse might say, you know what? It's not even worth our time to deintegrate it from our our framework so we're just gonna shut it down i could 100 percent see that they just don't want they don't want to they don't want to hassle with it they don't feel like it really going anywhere it's gonna go anywhere and so they're like fuck it they're just gonna close it down so hearth pwn is closed i think hearth had closed like a long ass time ago let me see if hearth even like up i don't even know see hearth head head.com uh and it says uh oh here it is it says, oh, no, oh, I got 55 seconds. It's been, a quiet here. it's been a quiet few months here on Hearthhead, as you may or may not have been aware. Zam acquired the Hearthstone top decks at the beginning of the year. Since then, we've considered 
but consolidated both of the teams to create a better Hearthstone site and bring you higher quality content. We're very sad to announce that we'll be closing down Hearthhead and focus of our other efforts. Uh, we can't thank you all enough for the support over the years and hope you'll continue to rely on us for your Hearthstone needs by visiting Hearthstone Top Decks. Hearthstone may come back someday, reborn as something else. No, it won't. All right. And then here's Hearthstone Top Decks. And I don't know anything about this site. But it's up. And it's probably going to get a lot of traffic because it's going to be the last man standing in the battle royale of Hearthstone related sites. But there he is. It's fandom uh, wanting to focus attention on their wiki trash. Probably. Oh, man. Yeah, more than likely. <sighs> Tempo Storm is still up. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, Tempo Storm. Okay, so what is it? Tempo Storm V? No, this is another one. It's not just Hearthstone Top Decks. This is another one. Um, that uh, does stuff. Isn't Hearthstone ripped now? I feel like the greater majority of players have pretty much fallen off of uh, of Hearthstone. I would say probably the majority of their player base is probably mobile. And that's it. Um, and, and the main reason why like I fell off, and I feel like this is actually a pretty prevalent thing, is that uh, um, a lot of people are is that once you like once you fall off and don't play for a little bit, suddenly your decks are garbage. And you have to, and it's like, okay, well, all these, all these decks that I built that were awesome are now complete ass because better cards have come out, uh, or better combinations of cards have come out. And so that's, so that's it. So you got to basically start over and it's just like, you know what? Forget it. Like I just, I didn't, I, I, I was just not going to, I'm not going to subscribe to the grind on a card game that I want to like relax and play. Uh, Hearthstone is $500 every four months to be competitive. Damn. That sounds like an actual stat and I would not doubt it. Basically, every TCG is like that. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I don't play a lot of TCGs, um, but uh, I would not be surprised if that was the case. And so that's why I, I basically was like, nah, I'm going to get out of there. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of people did the same thing because, as we know, Hearthstone was one of the first games to really reach out and really grab the non-TCG community and get them to play a TCG. CCG. Uh, G -G -G -G. Uh, and so... Yeah, I could totally see that being um, being a thing. It's like people played it for a long time, and then once the actual, once the actual, uh, uh, I guess, the usual antics that usually come come along with uh, you know card games started rearing their ugly heads, people are like, you know, what? I think I'm going to go ahead and dip out. Yeah, uh, I thought of picking up actual Magic the Gathering, and then I remembered how much it would cost. That killed my buzz on it. About one thousand for physical card games to be competitive. Not exactly true, though. You can build a deck for free through Quest, but you can get one deck, not nine. Well, what part is not exactly true? Because my point was that you can't really have a viable deck uh, at, uh, at certain tiers. Maybe I didn't say this specifically, but yeah, I feel like you can't have a very viable deck for ranked um, if you're starting with basic, basic cards. You'll get, you'll get somewhere, but not far. Um, I remember when I was playing, I was doing ranked, and I couldn't, I mean, over time, after having not played for a couple months, Suddenly it was like, I was just getting trashed all over the place. Someone said that they need $500 to be competitive. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, there was someone who showed you could reach the top with a free deck. Oh, really? So someone did pull it off. I, I'm curious what the stats are on that. Uh, as someone who plays a bunch of TCGs, Hearthstone grinds like gears because because uh, because uh, of RNG card that has RNG effect. Yep. Um, what? Guys, sounds like too much work for me. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Moving on! Moving on, we actually have a, uh, we actually have Randy. update today. Now I said, I said that I didn't want to pick on Randy for like every fucking little thing that he said, but he did say something pretty fucking weird, uh, that I, I really want, I really wanted to like, to point out. Um, so there is a video that was floating around on Twitter, uh, where a cat is playing with a crab. Now I'm not going to show the video, uh, but basically... The cat is kind of like, you know, like cats do kind of like tap, 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 tap. And the crab is like, bitch, and fucking clamps down the paw. And the cat like starts jumping around and starts freaking out because a fucking crab is pinching his claw, his paw, right? So the cat is clearly in a lot of pain. Um, and he retweeted it. He had retweeted the video, which is now removed. So I'm guessing that the video is, uh, uh, the video has been removed from Twitter entirely because... Because, I mean, there's a, little, there's a little bit of animal cruelty in there when the person holding the camera was basically just like, ah, uh, look at this fucking cat's getting tore up by this, by this crab. Um, and he says, I tend to favor curiosity and disfavor setting up a feeling and empathetic creature for discomfort. Yet among the negative reactions I felt watching this, there's also some other stuff that isn't exactly negative. This makes me curious about how, the, how other people react. And... 
And I, I just don't know what the fuck he means. What the fuck he really means. I mean, yeah, it's a funny sentence, right? I tend to favor curiosity and disfavor setting up a feeling and empathetic creature. He's basically saying a creature that has feelings, I guess, uh, for discomfort. Yet, <laughs> but uh, among the negative reactions I felt watching this, there's also some other stuff that isn't exactly negative. I mean, the video is also recorded in vertical. All right, it was recorded in portrait mode, so like there there wasn't a lot of redeeming factors for this particular video, honestly. Um, it's just <laughs> Elon Elon laughing at the drowned deer in a pool was a thing. That's true. You're right. Maybe there's a certain level of success where <laughs> where this goddamn that's really funny actually. Maybe there's a certain level of success where uh, uh where you where you become where you become this. Where you 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 say weird things like this on Twitter? Notch, Elon, Randy. Now, outside of this, he's been relatively silent. Most of the stuff he said is pretty chill, which is what made this stand out even more. Like if 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 he if he was going off on his whole thing like he was doing before he got off Twitter, right? Uh, and I say this in quotes. He got off Twitter because we didn't no official word that he like kind of laid off of Twitter. Um, this would just kind of fit in with everything else. But the fact that he was like laying low for like at least a good week and a half, 10 days or so, right? Uh, and then says stuff like this. Yeah, and those, I mean, there's the whole CEOs being sociopaths thing. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Just, um, just an odd thing. Just a really, just a really odd thing that I, I, I wanted to, I wanted to have a record of because, uh, because yeah, I'm curious. I, I wonder if, if every other week we're gonna get like some weird like Randy. tweet and eventually it's like he's gonna turn into like a Phil Fish or Notch or whatever uh, where we're gonna get this um, I don't know uh, he also said no Russia take that back Tim Apple is great Tim Apple <laughs> uh, he's just so concerned with how people react to what he's saying he's, uh, uh, to what he says he's starting to enjoy the dark side of trolling maybe that's the case Maybe that's the case. Maybe he's just fucking with everybody. That would not be a smart thing to do in his position. It really would not. Someone like Notch, sure, because he owes no one anything because he's the fucking richest game developer in the world. He doesn't have to do shit. He doesn't have to uh, get approval for anybody. But somebody like Randy, that's a little bit different. He's setting us up with these some small weird tweets. So when the real Barkas shit gets posted, we just roll our eyes like Trump's Twitter. <laughs> Oh man, yes, yes. Notch has fuck you money times ten, um, and and apparently it's pretty lonely uh, at the top. I, I have a little bit of sympathy for Notch from a person, like a, I guess as a as a person. Uh, he does say some things I definitely don't condone at all. But uh, but yeah, I can't imagine. I feel I feel like Notch is fucking lonely, and <laughs> I feel like it's something that just happens when you get a certain level of success. It's lonely at the top. That's what the saying is, right? Oh man. So, yeah, is it Randy the guy who had child porn on his USB memory stick along with confidential company information? Uh, it wasn't child porn. It was. Uh, I mean, I didn't. I. I. I don't. I don't think there's any verifiable source or anything. But he did say that it was barely legal teens. So, or yeah, they were like teens. And I think it was like he was into squirting or something like that. Um, I want to say that was actually. I think it's actually a quote. But don't quote me on that quoting him. Okay. All right. So, last little bit of news. Really, it's nothing too big, except that it is Steam World Quest is out now on Steam. Uh, I gotta, I, I gotta bring it up because uh, you guys know I, I love the Steam World series, uh, and Steam World Quest is like my favorite fucking game right now. Uh, one of my favorite games. Um, and you can pick it up now on Steam if you if you like. Uh, it is an RPG with card collecting mechanics and deck building mechanics. Uh, but it is not a deck builder per se, I guess. It's fun. Whatever. Um, EGS World Quest. No, 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 no. Another TC. No, it's not. I promise. I promise. Uh, I actually wonder what their, uh, what their reviews look like right now. Please be good. Positive. Okay, positive. Woof. The only problem I have with the game, just so you guys know, the only problem I have with the game is that, um, is that it's, 
does not have a deck saving feature. So, but I haven't found, up until completing the game, I didn't necessarily feel the need to swap out, like build decks for certain builds, right? To have like profiles for certain builds. Um, but now that I finished the game and I'm doing this arena thing that they have, uh, now I see the, the value in having builds. Because some of the characters can have like drastically different approaches to combat just based off the deck itself. So, so keep that in mind. I'm sure it's probably their biggest complaint. I'm willing to bet that there's probably down here somewhere. Uh, let's see. The cons, undecided. It's the cons. Could be more difficult if so desired. Do the game be focused on you if you can? Okay, no, nothing there. Uh, maybe I'm the only one. Let's see. Gameplay, story, uh, whatever. You guys, uh, just trust me. I don't, I, don't need, I don't need anybody else backing me up on this. That's the only problem I have with the game. Otherwise... It's good. Uh, big deck energy, though. Yes, yes. Speaking of energy. Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, baby. Studies have proven that ingredients in Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, caffeine in combination with theanine, have been shown to increase accuracy and alertness. <sighs> Thoroughly warm now. Still not too bad. All right. That's it. My name is Mike B. <laughs> <laughs> this is donuts uh, that's it for the news chat thank you so much thank you so much guys for for really backing me up on news today you guys fucking pulled up some pulled up some fucking some bullet points for me i appreciate that very much uh make sure if you're watching on youtube check the notes below for all the links to everything that we talk about today uh i'll try to squeeze in the stuff about the twitch artifact i'll just throw in the directory and you could go look for it there and um <laughs> donut <gasps> and that's it so uh my name is mike b you can find me aka mike b on all the platforms chat donut that's it mountain new amp game fuel baby <laughs>